welcome to you, uh, 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 Advent season lunchtime lecturers. Uh, it's good to see a, a, uh, such, a, uh, such a fine, intimate crowd. Uh, um, you know, as you know, I am uh, still officially assistant archivist of the uh, Moravian Church Southern Province, succeeding Daniel as of the 1st of January, so you can still call me assistant archivist until then. Um, we have a celebration this uh, today, uh, a 100th, uh, 100th year celebration. Uh, uh, for one of our congregations that it got a name 92 years after it was begun. 92 years. Now the interesting thing is that, that uh, um, Avian Church, we're careful to, um, to name our churches or our places. Uh, place names are important for us. And as you know, one of our more important ones here in the southern province is uh, the uh, name we gave to our purchase of land from the, Lord, uh, uh, from the Earl of Granville in 1753, Wachovia. You know the story that our explorer bishop, August Gottlieb Spangenberg, uh, and his uh, survey party um, uh, scoured the upper regions of North Carolina to come up with almost exactly 100,000 acres of land to purchase from John Carteret the Earl of Granville in his vast uh, North Carolina uh, territory. And it was Spangenberg who named up uh, uh, this tract of land, this 100,000 acres of land, Wachovia, Di Wachau, after an ancestral estate of the, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, church leader Nicholas Ludwig von Sinsendorf um, on the Danube River, about 60 kilometers to the west of Vienna, uh, in a no, uh, north south crook of the Danube River. This happens to be Dernstein, the village of Dernstein, in, uh, on the Danube River. Frankly, I don't think there was anything in Wachovia that looked anywhere near uh, that, uh, that ancestral land of Nicholas Ludwig von Sensendorf. But the names were important for us Moravians in our Wachovia. The first settlement didn't have a name for the first three and a half, uh, three years. It, was, um, it, it wasn't called Bethabra until November of 1757 when the Lavages came on a pastoral visit from Europe. And Daniel Cruz, our, our archivist, uh, and I noted that in our, uh, in our 250th anniversary history of the, uh, of the province that, well, it was commonplace, even with uh, Miss Adelaide Fries, our, our longtime archivist, uh, uh, that uh, we still called the settlement Bethabra, even though the name, even though it had no name, actually was called Wachovia, the Wachovia Diary. And yet, in later times, more recent times, uh, we were, got accustomed to calling it Bethabra. And so, for, even for the beginning of the Wachovia settlement, Daniel and I decided, well, let's just go ahead. And in our 250th anniversary history, we called it from the beginning Bethabra, even though it didn't have a name until November of 1757, I believe it was. The second community, Bethania, was, uh, its name was brought down 
uh, from Pennsylvania by August Gottlieb Spangenberg uh, just before it was laid out uh, in June of uh, 1759. And so that name too was selected not here or chosen arbitrarily. Uh, 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 it was so carefully selected by church leaders in Pennsylvania, or more than likely in Europe, in Herrenhut. For the settlement of Friedberg, well, we thought those, uh, 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 those uh, individuals of that, uh, uh, those people of that settlement congregation would uh, uh, of that country congregation, excuse me, uh, since so many of them had come from the Heidelberg area of Pennsylvania, why we would call it Heidelberg. <laughs> Their comment was, wait a minute, we moved from Heidelberg area because, well, we preferred being down here. We want a different and better name. And so we got it Friedberg. Even Salem itself had a change of name. Um, <clears throat> originally, the idea was to call it Unitas, as the central administrative community of our, our Wachovia lands. And then after a while, that idea was changed. We believe it was by uh, Nicholas Ludwig von Sensendorf himself to a more, I think, felicitous name, Salem, peace, or even the new Jerusalem, you might say, recalling uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the new Jerusalem of the Book of Reve Revelation. But we're talking about <clears throat> Yet another congregation of our uh, of of Wachovia, a congregation that was begun in 1822. Actually, their first uh, uh, their their first uh, meeting was March 24th, 1822. It was the inspiration of the female. The Salem Female Missionary Society, which had been, uh, been formed earlier that year. In their third meeting, the Salem Female Missionary De uh, Society decided to, uh, to start a mission for the African heritage people in the area. And that's probably why we took so long for a name. What do you call the African church? What do you call, well, it may be that the first real use of the name slave church was in this history with courage for the future. Um, let's be honest. We're not, we Moravians weren't the only ones who had difficulty say, uh, saying what the, these of African heritage were. Um, you look in the Constitution of the United States, and there is no mention of the word slave or slavery. And yet the southern states made sure that those of African heritage were counted in the uh, census po uh, population for representation in Congress. How did we treat the word? Well, for the most part, we buried it. We used other terms. Servant, for example. In the King James Bible, there are two uses, two mentions of the word slave. Hmm. For our purposes, we adapted, for the most part, the use of the name colored as the most suitable for our new mission here in Wachovia. And so the single sisters 
turned to a man who was accomplished in starting mission work, Abraham Steiner, who in 1799 and 18, or 1800 had... Uh, uh, made journeys out into the Cherokee Nation and had, with the uh, uh, approval of the Cherokee Nation, begun our mission to the, Cher uh, to the Cherokee Nation, um, our mission which we called Spring Place. And so Abraham Steiner, who had uh, uh, also served as the uh, uh, headmaster of the uh, uh, Salem Female Academy, and also for a time as the uh, boys' school headmaster, was called upon by the uh, uh, by the province to begin the mission at the uh, uh, for our those of African heritage in the area. The diary of the little Congr uh, Negro congregation in and around Salem. That is what Abraham Steiner uh, uh, titled it, the little Negro congregation. That's the diary he used. He started and was used for the next 43 years. Um, until, uh, until the end of the Civil War, I was curious to find out how many times the word slave appeared in it. Six times. And the first time, Abraham Steiner wrote that it did not matter that your station in life had to be as a slave. Yes, you can come and join the church, bring your children to have them baptized. I thought that was very sweet. Another was the use um, twice. Abraham Steiner um, had, uh, uh, um, had written a memoir of uh, one of the church members who had been born in Africa but had been sold into slavery to come to America. And she, uh, he said, uh, he noted that she was treated more like a servant than a slave. We have one mention of a tragic mention. That uh, Johann Renatus Schmidt the missionary in 1836. On October 5th, a member of our little congregation and the property of the deceit property of the deceased Joshua Bona had the sad fate of being sold to a slave trader. The last mention of slave was May 21st, 1865, where the chaplain of the 10th Ohio Cavalry uh, uh, announced that no longer were those of African heritage slaves, but because of the proclamation of the President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, they were now free people, free people. Our African church, our log church begun in 1823. Ah. George Frederick Bonson was a leader of the Moravian church in the, uh, 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 yeah, during the Civil War uh, the 18, uh, in the 1860s. Um, in our writing for the uh, uh, With Courage for the Future, our 250th anniversary history, I got hints, hints that over time there was a, that there, there was a ministers had an opinion and congregations seem to have 
a different opinion. There were in, in these 1840s and 50s um, what I call the Gang of Four uh, Ministers. Francis Florentine Hagen, E.T. Sensiman, um, um, Jacob Seavers, and um, Francis Raymond Holland. Did I mention him already? Francis, no, Francis Raymond Holland, Francis Florentine Hagen. All of these in their mission, in their work as ministers, uh, ministered to those of African heritage, especially at Bethania, uh, where for uh, frequently there were baptisms for uh, uh, for those uh, uh, for children, young children. Uh, 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 there were um, attempts to uh, hold services in the. Uh, uh, in the Bethania Church and at Hope and Friedberg as well with E.T. Sensiman. And at the home church, as the Civil War approached, we had uh, Francis Raymond Holland inspiring new work uh, uh, and enthusiasm, enthusiasm with our, our African church, our colored church, which still had no name. The, uh, work in the uh, African church here in Salem was growing even in 1857 it was growing Brother Bronson Brother Bonson, George Frederick Bonson, in a colored church report, that was the title he gave to it, um, in 1857, November 22nd, Brother Bonson called upon um, such as desired to give themselves up to the Savior to come forward and give him their right hand. Several came forward and promised to be Christ. Brother Bonson then gave them instruction on Thursday, the 28th of November. A dozen Negroes attended, some of them members of another church. It is the intention to continue this instruction, and the hope is entertained that some of them will be ready and, will and, and, um, and willing for confirmation. Very much cannot be expected, though, in the opinion of several ministering brethren who have given the matter any consideration as long as the Negroes are separated from the white congregation, which is dictated by the necessity inasmuch as the church edifice of the white congregation, now known as Home Moravian Church, does not possess sufficient room to admit the colored people. A wish, however, naturally intrudes itself to be able to procure a church edifice which would afford accommodations to both white and colored people. Their admission into the white people's church is, in our opinion, one of the causes that induced them to frequent the house of God in our neighboring town of Winston. That was 1857. Francis Raymond Holland, I believe, arrived in 1859 and took charge of the, uh, um, uh, 1858 or 1859, and took charge of the, uh, uh, of the African church down at the foot of, uh, of Church Street today. And it was in 1859 that the congregation had grown so large that uh, Salem Congregation Home Church Council um, uh, stated that um, stated that it uh, uh, cons after after consideration at the uh, considerable discussion it was moved and seconded that it is the sense of this body that an enlargement of our church is desired. 
That was two years after George Frederick Bonson said, if we, if we want to have colored members to participate more, they need to be part of the European Congregation Home Church. Before calling the vote, it was asked in the Congregation Council, is this question of the enlargement of home church agitated for the purpose of admitting blacks into our church? There was a differentiation from minister, between ministers and congregation. You can feel it throughout that history. It was short order, less than two years when work was begun on, ah, the brick church, <laughs> which is having it, uh, uh, um, let's see, de uh, um, uh, let's, uh, um, uh, dedication, it's opening, I think, or uh, uh, anniversary later in uh, next week. And yet the church still had Oh, uh, it's, uh, the church was not open when Phoebe, when Phoebe died in August of 1861. She was one of the first three members of a Brother Abraham Steiner's mission church at the foot of Church Street um, in 1822. Her husband, Budney, was the second member, and uh, uh, Johannes Emmanuel was the third member. He had died, both of those had died earlier. Phoebe passed away. Uh, um, in, whoop, with her passing away, she, she was uh, 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 buried in the new African church, uh, God's Acre, to the northwest, northeast of Salem Cemetery today. And her funeral service was held the day after the cornerstone laying in August of 1861. Um, her funeral was held because there was such a large attendance in the white church, the home Moravian church. And yet, as it was, St. Saint Philip's, the brick church, and the older uh, log church going back to 1823 still had no name. Even in the 1860s, even with emancipation. Uh, uh, and uh, that, did, uh, that did not take, pla take place for, uh, for another half a century until this man showed up. Edward Rontaler in 1877. He was the, uh, assigned as the minister of the colored church, and that's the term he used. He was a northerner. He had served in the northern province for, uh, 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 for, uh, for a number of years. Uh, his father was a minister of the Moravian church, and I think his grandfather was as well. But it was not until December 20th, 1914, that Edward Rontaler gave the colored church a name. On, November, on December 20th, 1814, in the Advent season as we come up toward, uh, 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 toward Christmas, and the church newspaper, the Wachovia Moravian, very care, uh, prominently uh, mentions what went on that December 20th, 1914. You notice something about the listing of St. Philip's. Let's get a close up. St. Philip's listed after the Home Church, Calvary, Christ Church, Fairview, Freeze Memorial, Trinity, there's St. Philip's. Uh, what are all these churches here? Ah, Salem Congregation. 
that this is the page two uh, statistics of the uh, 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 of the uh, of the church. So 56 members in the African church, no longer African church. On the next page, page three, we have two mentions, one down here and down here for the brand new name of St. Philip's, Churches of Salem Congregation. East Winston, uh, uh, Salem, that's, uh, that, that is now Freeze Memorial Church, Trinity and St. Philip's, formerly the colored church. And also concluding the memorabilia of 1814 in a large and solemn um, service. St. Philip's was given a uh, growing and cut. Uh, um, uh, the St. Philip's was named. And we have. In the February of 1915, we have the, uh, the announcement of what took place. On Sunday afternoon, December 20th, the annual Christmas love feast was held. A large gathering of people were present, about 400 being 400 being served love feast. At the close, candles were distributed to the children. We were glad to have have with us on this occasion Bishop Ron Toller and brethren and brother Heath. Bishop Ron Toller, in a most loving and affectionate address, assigned the name of St. Philip's to the venerable place of worship for the colored people, which was a pro, uh, uh, appreciated appreciatively uh, accepted by the large congregation. Brother Heath also, in very interesting manner, related some of his experiences and labors among the colored people in the mission field. His remarks were heard with deep interest and were appreciated. On Monday night, December 28th, the Christmas concert was held. It was one of the best efforts ever made in the school. The program consisted of Christmas anthems and recitations and was splendidly rendered. The opening prayer was led by Brother uh, McQuiston, that's John F. McQuiston, who also, in a few earnest remarks, directed the large congregation to the Savior. In Bishop Rontaler's own words from his diary, for which I want to thank Grace Robinson for typing in, because I can't read it. <laughs> Sunday, December the 20th. A dark and at times rainy day when Brother C went with Brother C. E. Crest to Providence and enjoyed the ride with him, had 17 people in church compared to 400. Next came the pleasant baptism of little William Idol, that's Ruth Severs's, at the house, then went to a very good and large love feast in the colored church, on which occasion solemn, solemnly, re we solemnly received the name of St. Philip's then hurried to the depot for Greensboro where I was encouraged, back by midnight. Notice what he did the next day. Monday, December 21st, the day has been a short day indeed, as it was given to resting. <clears throat> we can understand that. And so the colored, the African, the slave church, former slave church, finally had a name, the name it continues to use today. But there was one problem with the name. How do you spell it? <laughs> This one, I'm, I'm gratified to know, is a slight typo. We newspaper people know about typos. Uh, 
but it is, is it Phil, St. Philip apostrophe S? Is, uh, 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 how is it uh, frequently it shows up with two L's, St. Philip's? Little, little, little. But there was someone to turn to to ask, okay, what's official? And so we did. And Cedric Rodney, longtime minister of St. Philip's Moravian Church, said, well, it had its problems, but we spell it P-H-I-L-I-P-S, no apostrophe. And that's what, how it was used. I was asked once, which St. Philip's it was named after? Okay, which one? Was, was it the, the Philip who had the encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch? Good answer, Bill. But, not, but, but no cigar? <laughs> uh, St. Philip the Apostle, one of the twelve, That was Rubens. This one is uh, uh, Rembrandt. Uh -huh. so, uh, St. Philip the Evangelist. Now, which one would you choose? Yes, of course, St. Philip the Evangelist. And that is the, uh, the saint for whom St. Philip's was named. Today, up on Bonaire Avenue, a church rich, very rich in heritage and very honored and a member congregation of our southern province. And I must say too, those of, of, that, her, uh, of that, that church's heritage are very patient with those of um, another background. And I'm thankful that they're very patient with us for sometimes, well, ignoring them. St. Philip's Moravian Church, a very active church in the Moravian Church today. Thank you all for being here. Let's see, Ooh, I almost finished on time. We will have next month another anniversary 250th, going back away, it is the 250th anniversary of Salem, part one. There will be more anniversary celebration as we get to the actual 250th year, 2016. Thank you all for coming. Um,